Sir, I, I, I guess the best place to start would be, obviously the police are charging you with conspiracy, with being a part of this, and with first degree murder. What do you say to those charges? All right, take your time. My wife is dead. It's not not enough. What do you mean when you say it's not enough? I'm still fucking alive. The, according to a police report, there, there were emails exchanged between you and the other woman. How do you pronounce her name, her last name? Houchin? Yes, Houchin. Um, that you had sent her an email asking if the deed had been done yet. And if it had, that you would be forever grateful to her and, sh and show her that every day. Did you, in fact, send that email? I'm sure I did. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you I'm said. sure I did. You did? You're sure you did? The, I don't know if, you have, if the police had shared with you the circumstances, but it sounded like a pretty violent killing. Um, your wife had multiple stab wounds in her face. The bedroom door had been kicked in. Was it supposed to go like that? It was supposed to be just a fantasy thing. That's all we ever did on uh, emails and stuff. Fantasy. Everything that we ever did was fantasy. Fun. It's craziness. Never, it never should have went this far. It wasn't until I couldn't get my wife on the phone when I, I realized that something was wrong. That it might actually be real. And then when I couldn't get in touch with her and I could get in touch with her mom and her stepdad, uh, it started sinking in. And I was up in New York at the time and I was driving back when I finally was able to talk to the detective and he said that my wife had been really killed. So that email that you sent out saying, has the deed been done? If so, I'll be forever grateful. You never got a response to that particular email then? Or did, did she ever tell you, yes, it's done? I don't remember. The e emails, I mean, you can send a text or an email in seconds and forget about it. So it, I couldn't tell you 90% uh, of anything I've ever sent to anybody. So I don't know. And the rear garage door is where... Um, she was supposed to gain entry to the house. Did you leave that door open for her? Did you tell her about that door? I told her the door was open on occasion, yes, but other people have had keys to my house. When I moved into that house, seven or 10 days after we had moved in, uh, a kid walked into the front door that was locked with a key to the house. He was with a cleaning company. Um, one of the things that we were gonna do was change the locks on the doors. The only door that ever got done was the the back living room door. So, yeah, I, I probably I did tell her that the door would be unlocked, but my wife checked the doors every single, all the doors in the house every day. Staff Sergeant, the question I have to ask you, though, sir, is if this was just supposed to be a fantasy, why would you relate a detail such as where a door would be unlocked, where entry could be gained, to Miss Couchin if this was only supposed to be a fantasy? I don't know. Just, I don't know. I have no clue. And in the fantasy, was, was the killing supposed to be carried out the way it was with that, that level of violence? No, nothing like that. No. No. How did the scenario play out in your fantasy? In my fantasy, she fell down the stairs, maybe. Something like that. Not, nothing like that. Or you mean push down the stairs? Well, she, my wife had balance issues because of the surgery she had a year prior. Um, and every once in a while she would almost fall down. And then the dogs 
our dogs would always be under our feet. So it's not crazy to think that the dog would trip her because my dogs have actually tripped her a couple of times in the past. So that would be a crazy fantasy that, hey, she fell down the stairs because the dog tripped her. But, but that's not a fantasy about killing someone. You said you guys have fantasized about killing her. Well, yeah. Um, like, hey, let's kill her and then we can go and run away and be together forever. But, I mean, that never works. I still have, a, I had a job as of yesterday. Um, she had a job. Um, responsibilities. You're just not going to somehow find a million dollars on a corner and run away for the rest of your life. So it was just bullshit talk. I mean, if you wanted to run away right now, could you? I can't. I couldn't two days ago. I had $152 in my bank account yet two days ago, and I made it from upper New York to the house with that much, with that, that's it. So there's not like there was any realism to it, no truth to it, because I wasn't going to where. It, it sounds to me, though, almost like the only thing you're lamenting right now, though, is your situation. I mean, what about the fact that your wife was killed? If I spend the rest of my night, life in jail because of what happened to her, it won't be long enough. So what you're saying is you're ready to accept the punishment that comes your way. No matter what, my wife is dead. And because of what I said, somebody killed her, I think. So, I so, so Staff Sergeant, you're telling me that you never, you never said to her, go over here, on, go there on this night. Do it tonight, do it then. It was never planned to that detail. No. No. I mean, I'm, I've been in the military a long time, so whenever I look at a situation, I look at it from every aspect, all points of view. And no matter what I'm doing, I always figure out every option, every aspect of it. And that's just one of those things. When you're talking to somebody, you just naturally talk about every aspect of everything, you know. But didn't it occur to you, I mean, if, if you were dating this other woman, you guys were having an affair, okay, and you've admitted to that, correct, that you were having an affair with this counselor, okay, didn't you have some indication of what her personality might be like? I mean, no, she was a great person. Every time I ever saw her, she was a great person. She had anxiety issue, yes. She had, um, um, she was, yeah, she was taking medicine for anxiety, but not for crazy want to kill somebody. And it, and it wasn't just a killing, and I don't want to harp on this again, Staff Sergeant, but I have to bring it up, and that is that it was a very violent killing. Do you know that one of your wife's fingers had actually been severed off? No. You had not been told that? Police investigators didn't tell you that? They showed me a, a quick picture of something and that was it. When you saw the picture, surely that must have relayed some of the level of violence to you. What did you think when you saw that picture? That if I ever got my hands on the person who actually did it, with three seconds, I would kill him. Knowing now who did it, at least according to who the police say did it, do you still feel that way? If I have the option and the opportunity, she's dead. That's all there is to it. So, in, in no circumstance would that relationship ever continue, even if for some reason the two of you were let out, if it's found that she is guilty, if I have a chance, I will kill her. No questions asked. It's, it sounds a little strange you saying that right now when you had fantasized about this very thing with her. Fantasy and reality are two different things, are they not? So when you're playing in this game, Everything is cool because you can just go, oh, I didn't mean that to hit the reset button or whatever. I'll see you tomorrow. 
So at the end of the day, well, you can just put that over in the corner and don't worry about it no more or don't think about it. But now that it's reality, everything has changed. It doesn't matter anymore. And if I die, I die. But if I can take her out too, I'm gonna. If she's, if she's guilty, if I could take her out, I'd kill it right now. And then you'd be facing another murder charge. My wife is dead. I really don't care. To hear you talk about your wife like that now, to make a statement like that now, why would you have been having an affair with another woman in the first place? My wife got very sick a year ago. Um, she had hydrocephalus, very debilitating. She couldn't move, couldn't talk very well, didn't remember anything. Um, shortly before she was diagnosed with it and it started getting really bad, I had taken a second job. Just for fun, for extra money, play money. And she got real sick and then I took that job and I, I needed that job just to make ends meet. Um, gone 20 hours a day. I see my wife two hours a week. Um, things just happened. And she, was, she worked, wound up working at the same store and they put us on the same schedules and we became friends and then it got more. Um, and then I got into this relationship with her and it, it just got too deep, I guess. It got, the, the fantasy part was a lot of fun, you know. Um, Did you have any communication with Ms. Couchin in any shape or form after the murder happened, whether you knew about it at that point or not? Did, did you guys exchange any kind of communication after the fact? Um, a little bit, yes. Yes. Um, that weekend, she had told me that she had to go to Fredericksburg to pick up her sister's twins because her sister wanted to give them kids up. So her and her mother went up, were going up there, or went up there to pick up her niece and nephew. And then she told me about how the clutch went out in the car and they limped home and then they had to go up the next day in her vehicle to go get the kids. So yes, I had conversations with her and it was about kids, about her kids, her niece and nephew. The subject of your wife didn't come up at all? And you know, the police are, the case they're building on this is that you did this so that you could have the relationship with Ms. Gautzen and so that you wouldn't have to worry about a divorce and alimony and losing property and whatnot. What do you say to that? It had come up, yeah. The talk like that had come up, yes. When, when you had the, the fantasy discussions, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. What was said? I told her that I was not leaving my wife. I said, if Dana would agree to an equitable divorce, we would get divorced and, and that would be fine. Um, but she wants to stay. She wants to um, work through this, the affair. She wanted to work through it, um, go to counseling like we started, make our marriage better, and then um, come March, move from here to go somewhere else, because that's when I was supposed to move. That, hmm? You said that to Ms. Couchin, that if your wife was willing to work through this, you were going to stay married? I told her I'm not divorcing my wife. If she wants to stay and ruin my career and all that, I'm not going to divorce her. If it's an amicable divorce, we will get divorced and then her and I would try try life together. What was Ms. Couchin's reaction to that? She said she understood, always. And at no point did she ever relate to you that she had actually gone over there and killed your wife? She never said that she went and killed my wife, no. She never did. Not one time did she say, I killed your wife. Did she say she was planning to? I, 
Um, she said she had thought about how she would do it. Yes. Yes. And what did she say? What, what, what were those plans? What did she think? Fall down the stairs, make it look like an accident, something like that. Nothing like like what happened. No. Because she's a small person. I I don't even know what, how I could even think about her being able to do stuff like that. I don't know. You're talking about your girlfriend. Yes. Um. Are you just? I'm wondering, if you allow me, I'm wondering, Staff Sergeant, if, if you feel the way you feel because of the way the, the crime was carried out, because of the violence involved, if Ms. Gatson had just pushed your wife down the stairs, would you maybe feel different about this? No. My wife is still dead. I, I never wanted her to, to die. I just wanted her to divorce me amicably. That was it. There was never any, um, well, she's dead, it's good, let's go. Uh, I mean, there might have been talk about it, yeah, but it was not act upon it, never. Never act upon it. I mean, it's like people playing World of Warcraft games. They get into that character for 12, 14 hours a day, but once they get out of the character, it's, it's what they just did before. It's not real. And that talk was never real. Not for me. It was fun. It was, it, was, it was just, man, if we lived in a crazy world, the crazy shit we could do, that was it. And now that it's all really happened, What would you say to the family of your wife and your family? If I get out of jail any time before I'm dead, it's too soon. Do you think that might happen? I don't care. Don't. Do you intend to cooperate with police throughout this investigation and through the trial? So you are willing to testify against this counsel? Yes. Have the police discussed that with you? Is any opening up any other options for you? No, they just told me they kind of bullied me, but they told me to tell me what I tell them what I knew, what they knew, and just I mean, sir, I can't think of anything else I have to ask you. Is there anything else you would like to say before we conclude this? It doesn't mean much of anything, but. I mean, obviously, if I could change it and meet that instead of her, I would. And the the pain I put my parents did, through. Did you guys have any kids together, you and your yeah. wife? No kids. Okay. We had two dogs. Two dogs. Okay. Yeah. 